Hey guys, this is Sean Sanders. Thank you so much for clicking on to my channel. So hit that like button, subscribe, and tell a friend about me. So happy Vlogmas. <clears throat> You're probably wondering why I titled what I titled the video. Um, and uh, once you see it or, you know, you'll understand. So first of all, what I do want to say is I don't know all the players. I don't care about all the players. This is not what this video is about. Um, I am vegan <laughs> on these right T streets, okay? I am vegan in, in the streets of YouTube. Uh, I do not make a point to insert myself. However, I do believe in teachable moments. Even when I do reality TV show reviews, I believe in teachable moments. So what I want to do is just kind of shed some light on something that I'm very passionate about and that is being a foster parent so for those of you because I know I have new subscribers uh, I was a foster child and I ended up being a foster parent and I also became an adoptive parent um, I was scrolling late on why on on YouTube and I saw Sean Bradley um, having an epic rant about people talking about possibly removing children from his home I don't care about the the, the players in that what I want to do is talk about being a foster parent because I've been there I've been a foster child and I've been on the other side being a, an adoptive parent. Um, just like Sean, I was a therapeutic foster parent, which is different than being a, a regular foster parent. I wanted to deal with children um, who really nobody wanted. And so I did not want to go through a private adoption. I had two children of my own my husband had a child um, from a previous marriage and we only had boys and we wanted a daughter and so we decided that we didn't want babies because my children weren't babies anymore and everybody wants babies but nobody wants older children and I could have gone through a and a private adoption agency and gotten a baby um, we are an inter we are an interracial couple, so I could have gotten an interracial child, but we had the heart for a child who needed a home, and so we didn't want a baby. And my thing is, knowing my own experience, there are plenty of children out there to be adopted, and so <clears throat> we decided to go through being a foster parent because we figured one. Um, this wasn't this wasn't something that we were looking as a microwavable situation we were looking at it as this is a lifetime commitment just like having ch biological children this is going to be a lifetime commitment and I thought this was really great because we could you know we don't have to make a decision but we can still love on a child in our home and we specifically wanted daughters now I will tell you this you know, going through the agency, you have to go through background checks. You have to give your financials because, like Sean said, this they want to make sure that you are not using this agency or, or, or the agency of foster, being a foster parent as a means of your income. Now, I will say this. There are some people who have done a great job of making this a living. And what I say is, this is what they do full time. Um, but normally, the situation is, it's a, a two parent family, and the dad is out working, and she, the mom, is, you know, being a foster parent, and that is her job. Just, you know, being a, you know, stay at home mom fostering children. Um, and of course you have to have the heart for it. There are a lot of people that do not have the heart for being a foster parent. Um, and I have witnessed that uh, with my own child who came, came to us. Uh, let me just say something. 
about being a foster parent. It isn't for everyone and I don't want everyone to be a foster parent. However, moving into 2019, if you have watched Sean's videos and you have seen, cause I've been there from, I don't wanna say from the beginning, but I do remember Devante and Tim when they were young. I remember that. I remember about Devante getting a car and uh, having his, um, you know, getting ready to move into his first um, apartment. I do remember that. I remember all the children in between uh, that time. And I do remember, you know, him talking about why he went into foster care. We all have, me, Sean, and James, we all have been foster parents for different reasons. I put this on his post. I've always thought that this would be a great time, great way to collaborate because I do believe that giving people, you know, we all have our own separate platforms and people gravitate to who they gravitate to. And I thought because I'm not, not, I'm not an active foster parent anymore, but I'm still fostering children, um, that I want good people, good hearted people to step up in their community and do what other people can't do. Now, for those of you who are new to my channel, um, I have lived my life of service. I know Sean has lived his life of service. We're both military people and we both have similar you know, up, upbringings, but we're different people and we, we, come, we, we come at life in many ways differently. However, one thing I will say, backing up being a foster parent, it is not for everyone. But one thing that really bothers me is because being out in the trenches in the community and you see so many children not being cared for, and nobody wants to do what other people are willing to do. That bothers me. And when I was at the foster care agency, because you go through a lot of training, um, and, and, and I, let me just put it in perspective. When we became foster parents, I mean, they wanted us to adopt two little boys. I mean, within a week. They wanted us to adopt, they were, they, their parent, the parental rights had been taken. They were two and three years old. I had, I had a, 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 had a three and a five year old. I could have had a house full of boys and I had to tell them no because I wanted a daughter. That is how much agencies are looking to place children and families because foster care agencies want to one, renew, re, first, line of business is to reunify children to their families if at all possible it's always about reunification and if they can't do that they want to place them in solid stable homes and these homes come in different different uh types uh me and my husband, we are two parent family. There were single parent moms. There was there were there were single men. Okay? Men that didn't have a wife, didn't have any children of their own, but they were single men. Uh, we, I did res, respite to a couple. They were a, a lesbian couple and they were taking in children, a family. And that's another thing. A lot of times these kids come in with so much trauma and then when you're dealing with therapeutic foster foster uh, fostering you're dealing with children that nobody necessarily want to take their special needs they be, may be special needs medically they may be special needs emotionally um, meaning that they are dealing with a lot of trauma. There may be special needs because of sexually, and a lot of times they are special needs because they are older, okay? A lot of adult, especially if they have children in their own home, they do not wanna take older kids. 
because they can be problems. Now what I'll say this, the agency does not want to bounce kids from back to back to back. And so what they will do is they'll give you a little bit of background. They will tell you what the child has gone through. They will tell you how many times they've been placed. They will tell you, you know, what, you know, uh, what the situation is. They're not going to place a child with any old body. They try to fit the child with the parent because they don't want the additional trauma of these children being moved. They've already been removed from their primary parents. They don't want to continue to move children from place to place. And so and you get the you get the right first right of refusal. You may say, "You know what? I don't think I can deal with that." You know? You, you I don't think I can deal with that. Or, "Yeah, I can do with that." And there are other things. Um, there, I have met some wonderful people um, when we would when we would go to a Christmas party, and there was a there was a family that took that took a family of nine kids, nine ranging from uh, five to like sixteen, seventeen. And I mean, we, we all, all us parents, we stood up and we just had a standing ovation because a lot of people cannot take in a family of children. When I did respite care, we, uh, the, the couple, um, the ladies, they took, they took in a couple, they were three children. That's a family. I mean, that's a whole family of siblings that don't have to be split up. My situation, I adopted my daughter. She was the youngest she was the youngest of four and uh, they had first tried to keep them all together but the boys uh, could not they, they could not keep them all together because of the the boys and so the boys ended up being in group homes and then her and her older sister who are 10 years apart they stayed together until she got placed with me when she got placed with me her sister she my my daughter my daughter who was a foster child at the time she was six and her sister was 16 and only lived like a mile away so i talked to the foster mom and said you know they've always been together you know do you have a problem of you know us meeting together and so because she was so much older the the the, the older sister was part of our family too she was at our house during the summers and all that Fast forward, even though I never adopted her, this young lady is 29 years old and I was there during the birth of her first child. None of her family was there, I was there. I was the one holding the leg, watching life come through. She was with me the first you know, six weeks because she aged out of the system and she'd been on her own since she was 18. The foster family that the older sister went to she had a heart like Sean to only take in girls teenage girls and so she was a, a single woman who had a home big enough and she took in nothing but teenage girls some of the times these teenage girls were pregnant so she's now dealing with uh, trauma of a teenage girl and whatever they've gone through their lives and then teaching these women these young ladies to now be mothers not all the not all the girls were pregnant but she took in teenage girls and some of those teenage girls were pregnant you have to have a heart for that you have to and family is 2018 family co family comes in all different sizes and and all different backgrounds but the, the universe should have a heart for love. That should be the 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 uni that should be the common denominator. I have been privileged to be a foster parent with some really great people. However, I do know that there are some. <laughs> I, I'm just gonna say it. I'm just gonna say it. I, I know y'all don't believe it, but they ain't worth a damn. Okay, I have met some some foster parents. They ain't worth shit. That's it. Okay, uh, and and those people need to be weeded out. Case in point, I don't think a lot of people understand the psychology of trauma that some children go through. 
but when my daughter came to, to my, my house, all of her worldly possessions was in a big black glad garbage bag and a little dingy suitcase. What do you think that says to a child in her in her, his or her mind? Does that does that say I'm worth something with all of my clothes and my toys and I have to go someplace and be picked up in the middle of the night in a garbage bag? Does that mean I'm well cared for and thought of if all of my stuff is in a garbage bag, a big black glad garbage bag? That works on a child's psyche. Half of us adults can't even weather through uh